This video explains how to calculate different types of quantiles using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video I will show you different examples and the first example is based on the data that we can create with lines 2 and 3 of the code. So if you run these lines of code you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new vector object is appearing which is called x and we can print this data object to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 4 of the code and then you can see that our data object contains 1000 different numeric values. Now let's assume that we want to calculate the quantiles of these data. Then we can apply the quantile function as you can see in line 6 of the code. So if you run this line of code you can see at the bottom that five different values are returned. So the first value is the minimum value of our data which is equal to zero and the last value is the maximum value of our data which is equal to 100 and then you can also see the 25 50 and 75 percent quantiles so in this case these values are 23 50 and 75. So in this first example I have shown how to apply the quantile function to a vector object which contains only valid values. However it's also possible that your data might contain NA values and how to handle that is what I want to show you in the next example starting in line 8 of the code. So in this line of code I'm creating another vector object which is called x underscore NA and this vector object contains the values of x, so the 1000 numeric values and in addition an NA value. So if you apply the quantile function to these data you can see that the error message missing values and NANs not allowed if na.remove is false is returned. And the reason for that is that the quantile function cannot handle NA values without further specifications. However, fortunately, the quantile function provides the na.remove argument and we can set this argument to be equal to true in case we want to remove all the NA values from our data before calculating the quantiles. So if you run line 12 of the code, you can see that the same output is returned as in the first example. So this time we have removed the NA values from our data before calculating the quantiles. It's also possible to return only the numeric values that are showing the quantiles without these percentage labels on top of the values. And we can do that by using the unname function as you can see in line 14 of the code. So in this line of code we are applying the quantile function to our first data object x and then we are wrapping the unnamed function around this to remove the labels of the quantiles. So if you run line 14 of the code you can see that only the values are returned without the percentage labels on top. It's also possible to calculate the quantiles of data frame columns and this is what I want to show you in the next example starting in line 16 of the code. So in this line of code I'm loading the iris data set. So after running this line of code you can see that the iris data set is appearing at the top right and we can print the head of the iris data set to the bottom by running line 17 of the code and then you can see that our data frame contains five different columns and the first four columns contain numeric values and the fifth column is called species and contains three different groups. Now if you want to calculate quantiles based on the groups in the column species. Then we first need to install and load the dplyr package as you can see in lines 19 and 20 of the code. I have installed the package already so for that reason I'm just going to load it with line 20 of the code and after running this line of code we can calculate quantiles for the column sepal length based on the groups in the column species. So if you run lines 22 to 25 of the code you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that another output is returned and each row of this output shows the quantiles for one of the groups in our data. It's also possible to specify what types of quantiles you want to calculate. So the simplest quantile that we can calculate is the median as you can see in line 27 of the code. And we can specify that by using the props argument. So if we want to calculate the median, we simply have to specify the props argument to be equal to 0 
So if you run line 27 of the code, you can see that the median of our data is 50. However, we can also apply more complex sequences to the props argument, as you can see in the following examples. And depending on what type of sequence we are specifying, the quantile function returns different types of quantiles. So if we want to calculate tertiles, we can use the code that you can see in line 29. If we want to calculate quartiles, we can use the code that you can see in line 31. You can already see that this is the default setting because the output is exactly the same as in the previous examples. If we want to calculate quintiles, we can use the code that you can see in line 33. Six tiles are calculated by line 35. Septiles are calculated by line 37. And we can go on like that. So as you can see in the following lines of codes, depending on the sequence that we are specifying to the props argument, a different type of quantile is returned. So I think you are getting the idea of this. So for that reason, I'm not going to run all of these lines. However, one thing that I also want to show you is how to draw quantile quantile plots. And for this, we first need to create another vector object, which we are calling y. And this vector object is based on the values of the vector x plus some random noise that we are adding using the rnorm function. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the top right that another data object is appearing, which is called y. And now we can create a quantile quantile plot, as you can see in line 55 of the code. So before we draw this plot, we first need to enlarge the plotting window at the bottom right. And then we can run line 55. And then you can see that we have created a quantile quantile plot, which is based on our data objects x and y. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.